Jukebox. Welcome back. I'm Charlie. I'm Kyle. And we're going to do the song of the week this week. Yeah. But first, I have to say happy release day to all who celebrate. Woo! Tortured Poets Department comes out at midnight. Okay. What was and your song? And it's going to sound week? exactly the same as all her other music. So We don't know that. We don't know that. He's a hater. I'm a Swifty. But anyways, <laughs> what was your song of the week this week? So my song of the week this week was Beauty and the Beat by Justin Bieber and Nicki Minaj. A very mm. cult classic, very classic. quintessential Y2K, if yes. you will. Yes. I feel like this this music video was so iconic in ways that it we was just iconic. can't we, we, we can't express the words. You know, nowadays in music we don't really do music videos, you know, anymore. I noticed that like music videos no one really cares about them anymore because they don't get as many views and it's just but this music video especially when onika came on mm. and that little tutu and the at the poolside and she was like i gotta keep an eye for selene or you know iconic. like that was iconic mm -hmm. you know there that's the icon factor mm -hmm. i also feel like that since this was released in 2012 mm -hmm. and his believe album justin bieber's and I feel like at this point in time, Justin Bieber was like a, he was like the internet's boyfriend, you know, like everybody loved him. He had the flip or no, he didn't have the flip at this. He was that like was shaved earlier. kind of. He was a little shaved, but still everybody loved him. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to date him. And so when this music video came out and it was almost like a vlog, like it looked like he was holding the camera. Yeah. It, I don't know. I feel like all the lo ladies loved it. Yeah, for sure. Like, and Onika, just going back to Nikki, like, <laughs> Nikki. that was one of her best verses, seriously. And I love how when Nikki does a feature with someone, she like changes her flow to be very mm. reminiscent of the person she's on the song with. Yeah. Like, you know, when she collabed with, with like Willow Smith, I whip my hair back and forth when she was a little girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> her verse was very clean and very family friendly. And she really did, she did that, that with, with, this. with this too. Mm -hmm. And she even incorporated Selena, which was yeah, his girlfriend, girlfriend, at, the girlfriend time. at the time. Not anymore. After though. this music video, mm -hmm. a little bit after they actually split. Yeah, but, very drastic. Yeah. Well, okay, so on the mine, song? I chose Getaway Car by Taylor Swift in honor of this release that's about mm -hmm. to happen. Because. I'm just gonna get, I'm gonna like fangirl out right here. So basically, people are conspiracy, like there's conspiracies that she's gonna do a double album drop at midnight. And the other album that she's gonna drop is Reputation, which is the album Getaway Car is from. So I'm excited, cause I don't know what she's gonna do. Nobody knows, but I just, I just love Getaway Car. It was another iconic song she made even though she doesn't sing it in her tour, mm -hmm. uh, I can't even talk to you about her because <laughs> you don't like her. But um, there's actually a video of she recorded her and she made the song with Jack Antonoff, which was like one of her co-writers. Mm -hmm. So there's a video that she made and she like documented the process of this song being made. And if yeah. you just watch that video, that's Jack Antonoff. If you just watch that video, you can just see like, her her poetic lyrics come out like she just comes out with it poetic like, is really not the word i used oh to God. describe taylor. what would you use to describe bland i don't know <gasps> that is offensive here's the thing about taylor taylor she doesn't do anything for me and here's and why that's okay i feel like ever since that one song she made like 10 million years ago i'm feeling 22 she has not changed or developed as an artist since then and i know you guys are booing oh. me but it's the truth taylor I swift no as an artist literally so mediocre let's look at a video of her performing <laughs> on her own era's tour no stiff dance music i could get on that <laughs> stage and i could probably oh do God, that Kyle, better seriously i just feel like taylor swift she needs an era like an emo era you know miley's banger she era where she put that era. black scent on and she started mm. appropriating culture mm. Taylor needs that, seriously, mm. she does. Like, oh Taylor just needs an era. Like, she's so boring. Like, she's been doing this blonde she country thing ever, ever, for, for the longest time. Like, she's not changed, <laughs> developed as My an heart artist is at all. Um, first of all, she has many eras. That's her whole tour, eras tour. What's the difference between <laughs> the eras, though? What's the difference between the eras? Have, Could you name them? Yes, we have okay. our fearless era. Okay. I, Actually, we cannot get into this. We have 
this is for another time to debate. Okay. But, um, yeah, stay tuned for to to the Tortured Poets Department. Or you can listen to midnight. something else. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Hi everyone. Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. Um, today we're gonna be, <laughs> today we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite artists and someone who mine as well. Jolie Thank has you. also now been very well acquainted with. Jolie. Now. Who are we showing with? I think we need to just show these off really quick. We're talking about Joe today. Oh, the oh no. This one's Matt. Um, yeah, we're talking about Joe today. Um, which I'm really excited about because if Joe Curie, y'all have been Does watching. Say his last name. Yes. Perfect. Now you know. Boston's <laughs> finest. Um, okay. Yeah, he grew up like 15 minutes away from me. It's. Whatever. Are you guys friends? Yeah, because you know he's like oh. 10 years older than me. You know, they went to high school together. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways, uh, let's talk about him. Um. Anyways, um. Yeah. So we're just gonna talk about Joe. Oops. Sorry. We're gonna talk about him. We're gonna talk about his music. We're gonna talk about. The he's songs. just cool. Yeah. Overall, mm -hmm. I love that album cover. Genuinely Let me just throw that out now. One of my favorite celebrities and favorite artists. So let's get into the 
historical context <laughs> of Mr. <laughs> Joseph D. Keery. Um, so, yeah. first, we have to throw it back a little bit to a band called Post Animal. Fun fact, my brother actually told me about this band back in, like, 2017. Um, wow. OG I Stan. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever. Because um, my brother reviewed his album because he worked for a radio station at the time, and he was like, yeah, I know Not you like Stranger Things. Anything. Yeah, sorry. But, yeah, my brother was like, I know you love Stranger Things. I just found out that, you know, this guy, uh, the guy who plays the other guy's <laughs> Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> he was like, oh yeah, like, Steve Harrington has a band, uh, I just reviewed the album, it was pretty good, and so, huh. it came out in 2015, um, he was their guitarist and their drummer, and then, uh, he left in 2019, um, and my favorite song by them is Ralphie, I think it's their most popular one, but I really do just like it, that's and then, the only one I've heard, oh, that's okay, I and then I'm a fake um, fan. This is getting embarrassing. It's okay. And then it's as, um, you know, he got more popular with acting, he kind of stepped away from music for a little bit. Um, and then he dropped, or he became Joe. That's, is that how you say it? Yes, it's just Joe. I feel like a lot of people that don't know that. Joe. It is not. It is just Joe. Wow, I'm no, a really like fake Joe. fan. I yeah. should not be talking um, about this right now. And that right was in now. 2019 uh, with the first single being Roddy. Great song. Great song. Great song. On July 19th, 2019. And then he released his second single, Chateau, on Another August 9th, song. 2019. And can we roll the clip for a second uh, to prove that I am an OG? Uh, hello? Um, Fan? Hello? Um, chat? There we go. As you can see right there, August 10th, 2019. Whoa, that was added to my receipts. playlist. That, yeah. Um, I've, one thing about me, I'm going to brag about being an OG fan of someone. <laughs> um, so yeah, as you can see right there, um, right. Added, so. added that the day it came out. Um, wow. Yeah. That's dedication. I know. And then 2020 came wow. out in 2019. Um, Ironic. And it's this album, by the way. We're going to talk oh, about yeah, it now in a little bit more detail. Um, we should it, give these dates to you real yeah, quick, it, some background info. It talks about various topics like uh, fame especially on like Just Along for the Ride mm -hmm. and drug use with Flash Matten, um, his relationship with Micah Monroe, and also other topics in which I have previously discussed on this show, but we're going to keep this episode PG. Um, and perfect. it really just is like, I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. It's a perfect psych rock album. It's amazing. It's you just, just have to experience it yourself. Like, yeah, it, we can't his, even talk about it and do it justice. It's, yeah, it's very good. His music is really hard to like describe, I guess. Um, Cause yeah, I it mean, gives me very like Tame Impala mm -hmm. almost, but just like one step above that. Like, I don't even know. It's just like, a, mm -hmm. I don't know. And it's, it's for me, it has like such like a visceral like reaction every time I listen to it. it. Like I get like such specific memories of driving through the Bronx in the summer with my mom and um, yeah. on our way to Atlanta and just driving through New York City, like listening to that album. Mm -hmm. And it just reminds me of like such like a nice time in my life. It is so. very like nostalgic sounding. Mm -hmm. Like you hear the song and you immediately think of the first time you heard it. I don't know. I just love songs like that, that mm -hmm. you just like connect with a memory. It's very, I don't know what he's putting in these songs, yeah. but. And I do keep it think up. a lot of it has to do with the whole nostalgia bait of like Stranger Things, how For sure. people associate him with nostalgia. Mm -hmm. So they therefore associate his music with it yeah. as well and i think the and he's even me. he's even said that like while he tries to distance his, his music and his acting a lot of yeah the show has affected it um his music in a lot of different ways and like i i keep mentioning just along for the ride but that song really just is like it's great it's such a good song and then going on for our timeline a little bit he released a single keep your head up in september of 2020 um that was kind of just like a song that he made during COVID as uh, just a little pick me up. It interpolates uh, Keep Your Head Up by Tupac, which I think is a really cool fact because I've never seen anyone on the internet talk about that. Because yeah, um, I don't think anyone who listens to his music has noticed. Um, well, it's not a very popular song. I feel like mm -hmm. his other singles are all in like his well, top it, five. And then you see this and you're yeah. like, where did this come from? Because it wasn't on an album. It was just literally just like a yeah. throwaway song. And mm -hmm. I, when he like released the the whatever track yeah. list <laughs> for um decide 
I was a little bit shocked that it wasn't on there. Yeah, I really, yeah, me too. Yeah. I thought it'd be on there, but you know, it's a great song. Yeah. I recommend that song mm -hmm. if you're it's into really like weird stuff. It's it not is like it's, weird, but again, like, you know what I mean? It's another song about one of those topics that I choose mm -hmm. not to discuss today. <laughs> um, and it's just fun. It's yeah, I mean, it really just is like, I don't know, it's like super happy, super upbeat, like pick me up song. Yeah, I like it's to listen to it when I'm driving and I like to like sing it and hit the notes. Cause one thing about Joe, he's gonna sing in a falsetto, um, which I cannot do. Shout out my boy. Yeah. For real. So um and then, you know, I feel like Decide is kind of like was like his big break. Mm -hmm. Um that was released for on sure. September sixteenth, twenty twenty two. If you're an OG jukebox head, you'll remember when I live reacted to that whole album. <laughs> Um, and I did uh. <laughs> almost break my foot in the process, um, so that was fun. Only OGs remember. Yep, exactly. That was September of 2022. <laughs> um, but this album definitely di dives more into that topic, those topics mm -hmm. that were discussed on the first album, um, the fame, the price of it, specifically how like social media comes into play. Yeah. Like, let's see. Out of all of these songs, I uh, <laughs> probably on and on. Half Life. Half Life, I think, um, is one of my favorite songs of all time. Yes. Uh, figure Amazing. You Out. And I feel like there's more. And maybe also Slither are all about, like, the obsession with the internet and how, like, people's obsessions that they have with people affect those people. Like, um, especially, yeah, like, celebrities and stuff. Because um, he, like, deleted Instagram, like, fully. He only uses he went his, off the like, grid. <laughs> he only uses the band account now. Um, I respect that, rest honestly. Rest in peace, Uncle Jesse, um, Fly High. And then uh, it also kind of highlights um, his breakup that he had with Micah Monroe after she had cheated on him like a bunch. Um, in subject. fact, what? Sore subject. Yeah. Eek. So <laughs> in fact, uh, the song I Want Your Video, which is arguably my favorite song on this album, is about Micah, but they had broken up like really shortly, like before he kind of finalized the album. Um, and he originally was going to cut that song from the album and but he was convinced to keep it and i'm so glad that he was yeah because i love that song this it's a very cute just, song so, let's just give some commotion yeah to this whole thing it's yeah. just but it's then, amazing yeah just but then oh, there's a song everyone knows end of beginning um i think that blew up on tiktok i think if he hopefully drops another album but his next one is gonna go crazy mm -hmm. everyone's gonna be all over it like he has become mainstream. I don't yeah, know. It makes me so I love mad. that for him. I don't love it for me. But I yeah. love it for him. It's yep. amazing. We're but never going to get... He's never going to go on tour, but, you know. It's okay. It's whatever. I could talk about him for hours. But I'm actually going to talk about him more next week. So <laughs> we're going to wrap Perfect. this up. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about end of beginning next week. So um, I guess you'll hear you guys next, next week. Yeah. See you next week. Yeah. Bye. What's up, Jukebox? Um, I'm Peyton. And I'm Virginia. And we're back again with another soundtrack slash movie review. Mm -hmm. So today we're looking at the movie that isn't super new, came out a bit ago, but we recently just watched it, and it's Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. And it's, I mean, it was a really good movie, actually. Like, for something, I don't know, like, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. It's um, an A24 movie. It came out in 2022, but it must have just got put on Netflix or something because a lot of people started talking about it on TikTok. So naturally, me and Virginia wanted to watch it. Um, it's like the most like Gen Z movie I've ever seen in my oh, life. Yeah, it, no, like, it's really it's the most like accurately portraying Gen Z characters in a movie like I don't know how else to say yeah. that yeah no it's fair just like they're they're all young and stupid and like we do drugs and we make bad decisions yes. and we're all like <laughs> dramatic <decisions. laughs> like the whole movie is literally based around like like gossiping almost and yeah. like, like like drama and it like leads to their like fall and the horror of the movie so yeah. to say. It would basically be like if me and Virginia found a dead body and then played a guessing game of who killed them except we were killing the people that we thought killed them. And then in the end, because I'm just going to say this because it's been out, found out that they killed themselves by accident. Through so a TikTok. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
But today, we're going to go through the soundtrack a little bit, and we're going to do another live reaction to some of the songs. Uh, a lot of the songs are what you would consider like house music, like <laughs> gay pop. Recently coined by our girl Jojo Siwa. It would be like if you were music you'd be listening to to go to the cave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very like rave ish. And like, we can like get right into it. Like, Charlie XCX performs a lot of the songs. And her whole thing is, yeah, very like rave girl, like Gen Z yeah. kind of thing. And so it was her that composed it. And so was this person called Disaster Peace who like, apparently his real name is Richard Freeland with a V. So he's just like an American composer and musician. Let's start off, should I go down? Just hit, so I feel like I have to hit this first one because yeah. it's kind of a signature. So the first one is just called Hot Girl by Charlie XCX and I'm pretty sure it was made for the movie because it's got like the title of the film in it. It was released as a single like after the movie came out. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna see if this is the right line. songs that we listened to they were all basically like like saying the same they weren't like starting at the bottom like they were here but they just like stayed yeah there which is interesting this next one i feel like you guys will click you're gonna go oh wait i've heard of that it's also pretty repetitive y'all remember this off tiktok COVID 2019 <laughs> Let's see, wait, I wanna look at this one and then this one. Light into jealousy. Oh, it's really bright. <laughs> I think it's really loud on my ears. Is this like an Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I can't get into it. Like the weird like base of it is This is like um like Grimes type beat. <laughs> Overall, I think it the movie itself is really good. And it's a good watch. Oh it, yeah, it was a really good movie. Like I had my mom watch it. It was so good. Really? <laughs> I, yeah, my mom watched it. <laughs> it's I mean, it's like yes, it's very like 
younger generation, like Gen Z characters and stuff, mm -hmm. but it's still like a horror-esque kind of movie. Yeah. Like it's funny and like... Yeah. But talking about the songs specifically, this is not the best soundtrack that we have reviewed in my yeah. opinion. Uh, just a lot of like... It's very, very like discotheque like... It was just kind like, of music and it's... But not in a good way. It was yeah. like boring. Yeah, it doesn't have like rise and exposition and fall yeah. kind of thing like it did in Dune. No beat drops. No, no. <laughs> beat drops. Yeah, it was all just kind of background to fill the noise. I mean, it worked in the movie, but yeah. listening it to it like separately, it's like... Uh, but go watch the movie. It's on Netflix if you still have access. Yeah. I highly recommend it. <laughs> she still <does. laughs> You haven't been kicked off yet. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's all we have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the rest of our segments. Yeah. yeah. Okay, bye. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Jukebox News Flash, where we'll be recounting the top music news stories from the past week. I'm Kate. And I'm Kit. It seems as though music by Lennon McCartney is making a return. James McCartney and Sean O'Lennon have teamed up in their new release, Primrose Hill. The single is an acoustic ballad and was inspired by a vision McCartney had in Scotland as a child. James McCartney is the son of Paul and Linda McCartney and has featured on some of his parents' albums from the band Wings. Sean Ono Lennon is the only child of John Lennon and Yoko Ono and began making his own music in 1996. With hope, Primrose Hill will be the first of many New Age Lennon McCartney songs. Rapper NBA Youngboy was arrested on April 16th for both second and third degree felonies. The second degree felonies were labeled as possession of dangerous weapon by a restricted person and a pattern of unlawful activity, while the third degree felonies include identity fraud and forgery, as well as misdemeanor drug possession. NBA Youngboy, whose real name is Kentrell Galden, uh, has over 17 million monthly listeners on Spotify despite having zero radio play. Galden was under house arrest when he was detained after police executed a search warrant on the rapper's house. The warrant was granted as part of an ongoing investigation into criminal conduct. Canadian singer Celine Dion is releasing a documentary on June 25th. The Amazon Prime Video documentary will take a look at his, her career and struggle with stiff person syndrome, an autoimmune neurological disorder. The project is titled, I Am Celine Dion, and the official long line says, I Am Celine Dion, gives us a raw and honest behind the scenes look at the iconic superstar's struggle with a life altering illness. Serving as a love letter to her fans, the inspirational documentary highlights the music that has guided her life while also showcasing the resilience of the human spirit. Columbia University reports that stiff person syndrome, or SPS, affects one in a million people. The condition causes painful muscle spasms and can be a challenge to live with. Dion was diagnosed in December of 2022 and has since decided to raise awareness for SPS. In a statement, Dion said, During this absence, I decided I wanted to document this part of my life to try and raise awareness of this little-known condition and to help others who share this diagnosis. Jojo Siwa has received backlash since the release of her new single, Karma. The controversy began when it was revealed that the song was written and recorded in the early 2010s. The track producers, Rock Mafia, originally teamed up with Brit Smith to record a demo. Smith intended to release it in 2013 as her debut single, but ultimately ended up releasing a song called Provocative. Instead, when Siwa was confronted about it, she stated, I did not steal anything. There is no such thing as stealing. Amidst the Brit Smith controversy, Jojo has also claimed that she wanted to revolutionize music by introducing a genre called gay pop. Uh, this obviously did not go over well, as many pointed out that gay pop already is a thing, with many iconic artists including Freddie Mercury, Elton John, Lil Nas X, and Troy Sivan. She's brushing off the backlash, but clarified that she meant to see gay pop be recognized as an actual category and not just a title. Here's a rundown of music releases this weekend. City Hall's Monster, Pearl Jam's Dark Matter, Pillow Queen's Name Your Sorrow, Cloud Nothing's Final Summer, Lucy Rose's This Ain't The Way You Go Out, Local Natives' But I'll Wait For You, and Taylor Swift's The Tortured Poets Department. That's all for J-Hub Jukebox this week. We will see you again next week for our final show of the semester and my final show ever. So please tune in and thank you for tuning in and make sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Spotify at J-Hub Jukebox and catch 
us catch these clips on our YouTube channel, also called Jayhawk Jukebox. Have a great weekend, Jayhawks. Bring guests on my podcast. <laughs>